Today we've got a crazy story of a mom keeping their kids' presents for themselves. But first, I think I just need to get it all out. My pathological birth unit parents seem absolutely perfect from the outside looking in. They're white, wealthy, physically healthy, it looks like they have it all. They can buy new cars on a whim, and I've witnessed this plenty of times, can afford to go on various vacations every year, have jobs they genuinely enjoy, and have four children. I'm the oldest 19-year-old female. Following me there are two boys and one girl. There's an age gap of five years between my sister and I. They're very in love and are incredibly devoted to each other. My father consistently makes jokes about my mother being out of his league. My mother's always said that without my father, she would be completely lost. If he were to die, she would never remarry. Because nobody could replace what he was to her, and it would feel disrespectful to attempt that. Her words. To give you an idea of who they are, my mother's a very strong, direct woman. She describes herself as a black cup of coffee. Not for everyone. She's incredibly honest, to the point of it being occasionally brutal. This is offset by her need to appear completely perfect at all times. Externally, she comes across as a very cold person, but would tell anyone close to her that she is actually a big softy at heart. More on this later. My father is her polar opposite in every way. He's externally a very warm, outgoing person, very creative, musically and artistically inclined. He was the fun parent for a while during my childhood, but later contracted a disease and basically shut off entirely as a person. Internally, he's very introverted, very quiet, and more emotionally distant than I've ever experienced from another person. They both grew up in incredibly abusive homes. There is some sympathy to be had for them. The stories are not pretty, but also not mine to share, so I'll leave it at that. When they had children, they agreed that A would stop her career to care for us, and would return when my sister, the youngest, entered kindergarten. She was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, and according to her, it drove her up a wall. She hated being alone all day with nothing to do but clean. She re-entered the workforce at the time they agreed, with a shiny new master's degree under her belt. My childhood up to age 10 was okay. My earliest memory, and to be fair, this is from when I was around 4 I believe, is my father holding me up against a wall by my throat. I don't really know if this memory is real, but I'm inclined to believe it is for reasons I'll explain further. I don't know the exact date, month, year, they became different. I just know that something changed and suddenly I was the worst child they'd ever seen. Through the ages of 10 to 18, I endured mental, emotional, and occasionally physical abuse that simply devastated me. I don't have the words, ironically, to describe how incredibly wrong it was and how hurt I am. Some punishments I received in no particular order, not being allowed to change my clothes for any amount of time they decided, no pajamas, no other shirts or pants, no washing the outfit, no attempting to skirt this rule at all. I smelled so bad that I eventually resorted to stuffing my backpack with clothes so I could change in the school bathrooms. When they found out, I was punished further. Not being allowed to shower, brush my teeth, wash my face, etc. for any amount of time they decided. No deodorant either, no dry shampoo so my hair wouldn't smell. If they caught me, I was punished worse and for longer. My siblings were encouraged to tell mother and father if they saw me skirting the punishment at all. A regular punishment for any sort of conflict, bad grades, lying, arguing, talking back, was to be brought to their bedroom, the door closed, and to be screamed at for hours. And I mean hours. During this time, I was essentially belittled and insulted until I relented, sobbing and begging on my knees for them to forgive me. I endured this treatment for years. I can distinctly remember A calling me a psychopath and telling me that I was evil and that she wished she'd never had me. That she wished she could send me away to go live with another family so that they didn't have to deal with me. If they wanted to humiliate me, they would bring my siblings into the room and have them talk to me about what a bad sister I was, about how they hated me and the way I acted and that they didn't feel like I was part of the family. They would talk about how much they hated me being around and told me I made everything worse constantly and that I needed to take my punishments and be a better person. The pathological birth unit would use this as an opportunity to compare me to my siblings and talk about how much better children they were than me. At age 9, I think sometime around then, my memory is incredibly bad thanks ADHD, 
My mother and I had an argument that got so bad, she told me if I wanted to act like a witch, I could put a placemat on the floor and eat like a dog. Being nine, I was terrified of what would happen if I didn't, so I put a placemat on the floor and sat down crying. She then looked at me disgusted, called me pathetic, and told me to grow a backbone. I never, ever passively took her screaming at me ever again. This moment is burned into my brain. When I attempted ending things around 14 or 15, and they found out that I'd been self-hurting, my mother called me a coward and told me I was pathetic for not wanting to push through it. Both her and my father told me I was clearly looking for attention, and that if this is how I dealt with mental health issues, they would simply ignore me. When my brother attempted years later, they got him full medical treatment and vowed to change their ways. My father refused to look at or speak to me for weeks. I turned to lying as a child as a way to find some sort of stability for a few days at a time. This obviously became a problem and I'm now in treatment for it. I go to therapy regularly. They dealt with this by never allowing me to be alone, ever. I didn't have a phone, I had extremely limited computer access, and wasn't even allowed to be in my room by myself. I was to be in the living room at all times, and if I wasn't, I was interrogated like a gosh darn war prisoner. I was brought into the room and screamed at for hours, they went through my things, read my diary, and actually brought the diary in to read pages out loud and then insult me for anything I'd written. If I cried, my mother told me she hated the sound of me crying because I sounded pathetic. She would tell me to go into the bathroom to shut up and get myself together because looking at me crying was irritating. I can go on and on. I've been slapped, threatened, screamed at until my mother's lungs went hoarse isolated from my friends and from my classmates and basically just abused for years. On top of that, if I ever even attempted to tell them or anyone else what was going on, I was punished worse. They would tell me I was crazy, making things up and lying to get sympathy from other people. I've had an incredibly difficult time now feeling secure in anything I say or feel. Because for 8 years of my life, it was drilled into my head that saying anything about what they did to me was simply me lying for attention, even though I can remember what I went through and I have evidence of it happening. Journal entries from years ago and emails I sent myself, etc. I still question myself on a daily basis if what I went through was even real, and it's freaking awful. I hate feeling like nothing I remember is even real, constantly telling myself that I'm lying and don't deserve to be around. Which brings me to today. I went full no contact with them a few months ago, and it's been nothing short of amazing for my mental health. I feel like I'm getting better every day. I have a partner who loves and supports me through all of my issues, and I finally live in a house, renting, that feels like a safe space for me. My mother attempted to contact me through the one social media that I'd stupidly forgotten to block her on, and all of those bad thoughts, I'm a liar, I'm a bad person. I should tell them that I'm sorry and that I'm grateful to have parents who will take me back after being such a monster came flooding back. I never ended up responding to her, thankfully, and she ended up unfriending me, thank god. Later, I received a message from my sister via Facebook asking me to unblock her on Instagram. I told her I hadn't blocked her or my brothers, that she had blocked me. She informed me that she had unblocked me, she hadn't. I responded saying, paraphrasing here, Look, I'm happy to have you and our brothers in my life again, but you need to understand and accept that I will not be involving mother and father in my life anymore, and I intend to uphold that boundary. I love you, but they hurt me, and I need you to respect that boundary if we're going to be in contact. I'm now wondering if that might have been too high level as she's only 14. She responded by telling me off. She said she and my family think I'm incredibly mentally ill and that I'm not acting like her sister, which makes sense because I finally feel like myself after all these years. She's never seen me this way before. She only ever saw me in the throes of being abused. She said my parents never laid a hand on me or abused me in any way, just that they weren't perfect and were trying their best, that I'm lying, typical, and I need to pull myself out of this web of lies, typical, and be her sister again. To be fair to her, I'm not surprised. She's the pathological birth unit's golden child. The one they pamper and spoil because she adapted perfectly to their parenting. 
During therapy, my lovely therapist helped me understand that I was the scapegoat for all of the pathological birth unit's frustrations, with the ways they were treated as children and the general unhappiness they felt being around and being people. My sister was completely insulated from all of this. She never saw them hit me, scream at me, never saw all of the punishments, and if she did, it was because they made her an active part of it. Her perspective is the perspective of someone who was treated perfectly and praised for putting me down. I'm almost positive that she sent me that message just to get brownie points from them. At this point, I'm just tired of it all. I hate being around them, thinking about them and what they did to me. I hate that they were so freaking horrible that they completely damaged my mental health and made me into a shell of the child I was. I have years and years of therapy and treatment ahead of me. And I'm scared to have children because I feel like I'll turn into them and abuse my kids. I have severe social anxiety that actively prevents me from feeling normal and interacting with people normally. I was never taught to set boundaries or respect others' boundaries. I'm incapable of leaving arguments to calm myself down because I was never allowed to get away. I will have to work on myself for years to solve these issues, and ultimately they may never go away completely. For what it's worth, I didn't argue with my sister at all. I basically said, okay, I hope you have a wonderful future ahead of you and grow into a lovely young woman because I didn't want to give them any ammo for talking badly about me. I'm at a standstill though. I don't know how quite to move on from all of this now that I'm finally done. I feel a little stuck because I've never been in this position before. I thought writing it all out would help and it did. I feel a little better. If you read this far, thank you. I'm just glad OP is actively seeking treatment, and I hope letting all this out was a nice way to blow some steam off for OP. Also hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of fueling your hatred for these entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is mom trying to invite people to my wedding. So my fiance and I want to have very minimal people in our wedding because there's very few people we actually enjoy being around in our families. After sharing this news with my mom, she started to cry on the phone because I didn't invite her husband, my stepdads, family members that I really don't care about. She went on to say that they're her family and that it's messed up not to invite them. I ended up giving in, saying we can invite a few of them, but I'm changing my mind now because that's really something I don't want. It just seems like I have to please her or else I'm guilt tripped and considered a bad person. It makes me feel sick to my stomach to even think that I have to deal with this. I don't understand why she just can't understand that I want to do what I want to do. It's like she wants me to come off as the perfect kid wanting to invite certain people. I don't know, I'm just really upset about this. In this situation, I think this is where you learn to basically start putting your foot down and not giving in to the guilt trip attempt. Even if they cry, even if they try to make you sound like you're a terrible person, even if they try to get the whole family to turn against you, I think you just continue to not tolerate it. All you need to say is no, I don't want that. And from there, just ride the storm or consider maybe going little or no contact. I truly hate my family. My dad, he is a racist, homophobic, sexist, forced alpha that demands respect without giving any. He thinks it's okay to say the n-word as long as it's not at a black person. He makes sexist jokes by the hour. He thinks trans people are just messed up in the head and everything LGBTQ is just the left indoctrination by the left. He constantly goes through my diary and my room to the point where I made a fake diary. I've set boundaries like saying please do not go through my stuff without asking and he said it's my house I'll go through what I want. He also went through my trash like every time I threw something out. He is so insecure about his masculinity that he gets offended by anything that sets his kids ahead of him. My brother came out as gay, and since my brother went to school, all him and my mom have said is how my brother is obsessed with labeling himself. He's also just gross to me, and he never thinks before he speaks. Like, I was in the hospital and he made a poop joke to the freaking doctor, then proceeded to be confused why I was annoyed that he made a poop joke while the doctor talked about a possible life-threatening surgery I might need. He also just radiates anxiety. Like, I can't be in the same room as him sometimes because I start getting anxiety because of him. And when I tell him to try and take a breath, I'm promptly told to shut up and I need to relax. My mom 
Most of the time, ironically, I enjoy my time with her, but she's definitely a narcissist. Like, she makes fun of me to try and get laughs out of the family, and today, when I suggested that she doesn't make fun of her teenage daughter, she responded with, Yep, cause I'm definitely the cause of all your problems. Like, what? She also convinced me to switch therapists while I was in ED recovery because my therapist suggested that my parents might be the issue. She's homophobic, but not as bad as my dad. She's fine on her own, but when she gets with my dad, she's just as bad as him with a homophobia. She also likes to confide in Dr. Google and join a bunch of Facebook groups and then proceeds to act like she has a degree in the topic. She's also just gross, like she neglects to wash her hands after using the bathroom. And with my feeding tube, she thought it was unnecessary to change the bag that the tube feed was in. She's also just so negative. It's always, I can't do that. You would never be able to do that. Like, I said, wow, this is a lovely college campus. And it seems really safe. And she goes, yeah, other than that girl that got killed last year. Like, what was the point? She also tells me too much. Like, she's talked to me about her marriage issues things my brothers told her in secret, and other things you should not be talking to your kid about. She also doesn't respect me. In 2020, with my ED, I asked her not to tell anyone, and she told me that she didn't. Little did I know she messaged many people and posted on Facebook these sympathy traps all about how I'm in the hospital but I'm getting better and it was such a close call. But when she's acting like a normal human, she's enjoyable to be around. My sister, she's just a spoiled brat. Me and my brother turned out fine because we learned to separate ourselves from our parents. My sister has special needs and can't. My sister walks over my parents like a carpet, and when I don't let her do it to me, my parents get mad at me. She's 11, almost 12, and watches her iPad at full volume in restaurants. Recently she got mad and had a mini tantrum because the waitress only had ketchup in a bottle, not those little cups. She's also loud and never shuts up, like when she's not talking to someone, she's talking to herself. Normally she's crap talking me to herself, and I constantly have a headache, but I can't tell her to be quiet or I get told to stop. Like today, I just bought a mini blanket for me and I didn't give it to her, so she started to cry and called me mean the whole way home, and when I told her to stop, I got in trouble. This is a regular occurrence. My sister is a perfect example of bad parenting. She has no rules, so she eats pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sadly, I'm not lying. She's spoiled and gets angry when my parents won't buy her toys that cost $500. And she's just gross. She found my dad laughs at her farts, so she makes herself fart until she literally poos herself. Once, I pointed out how it's not healthy to give her pizza and french fries for all three meals. My parents proceeded to lecture me on how raising a kid is hard and I have no place to judge them unless I've had a kid. It doesn't take a genius to realize you're gonna give her heart issues letting her eat like this. I think the tomato sauce on the pizza is the only vegetable she eats a day. My brother, it's funny, he had thoughts of ending things and was so depressed and a mess before he left for military school, only weekend visits with the family, and ever since he got away, he's been flourishing. And I mean, I would never tell him, but I really look up to him. One example is how we just moved, and in our old house it was a closed floor plan, and this is an open floor plan house, and I pointed up, and I pointed out how they set up the furniture in the living room for a closed floor plan, so it really cut off the room, and if they moved some things around it would look a lot better. They got really offended that I suggested they change the floor plan. I also have OCD, and how they set up the floor plan really ticked off my OCD because it was bad. Later that night I was in my room and I overheard them talking and my mom goes, Normally she has a point but I just didn't want to justify it in the moment. Like really, are you so insecure that you can't let your child have a good idea? It's like, treat me like a kid and expect me to act like a kid. But don't expect me to act like an adult and treat me like a kid. It's no great surprise to me that considering OP's brother got out of there, they started flourishing. I think the same thing is the plan that OP should have, just get out of there as soon as they can. Leave all of that an entitled, judgmental mess in the rearview mirror. Karen quits her job because I'm ruining her perfect child. My friend convinced me to post this here, since she said it would fit here quite well and that it would be an interesting story. So for a bit of backstory, I'm non-binary and I worked at a poolside cafe last summer, which was quite a stressful job. 
Since I'm not very good with people and them getting annoyed, so I don't know what to do, but I always tried my best. We also had a lot of Karens come in, but I think that's just normal in a job like this. But this story's not about a customer, it's about an employee. So on my first few days, my manager and coworkers introduced me to nearly all of my colleagues except the kitchen staff, since I would barely ever meet them. If you think to yourself, why would you not meet the kitchen staff when serving? They only gave me the food and a note through a window, so I would only see one of the chefs handing me the food. She was part of the plate washers and she also did fries. And this Karen was part of the kitchen staff. She brought her kid to work every single day. I don't know why, but she did. She never spoke to me, just always gave me a weird stare. So after a few days, she and her kid come over to me and my colleague and this is how the conversation went down. Karen says, so what's your name and are you here permanently or just for a summer job? I say my name is Haven, nice to meet you, and I'm only here for five weeks. They say, what's your name again? I say Haven. Karen now looking at my colleague says, who would give their boy such a weird name? Colleague says, they're not a boy and why do you even care? Karen in the most Karen tone imaginable says, excuse me? Colleague says, they're not a boy. Karen is in shambles after hearing that. So you're one of those ungodly, insert homophobic slur here's, that'll infect my precious boy. God must punish you for doing this to my child. I at this point have no clue what to tell her. The kid asks me, what if you're not a boy? Are you a girl? I tell him, no, I'm non-binary. I identify as no gender. Karen cuts me off, don't talk to my kid or he'll also become one of those insert homophobic slurs here. Even if we're about to close, a small scene is developed and the manager comes over. I at this point have nothing to say. I was scared of her in that scream. The manager says, hey, what's the problem? Karen says, obviously your new employee is the problem. He's infecting my child. The colleague corrects her for using the wrong pronouns and manager says, I know them. They're not a problem. If you have one, leave. Karen proceeds to throw a tantrum while my colleague's comforting me. I was devastated at that point. Karen throws all the tablets and cutlery for the customers on the floor, screams one more time, and leaves with her child to never be seen again. And she was a part of the kitchen staff? I'm honestly surprised that they even allowed her to bring the kid to work. I don't know what the agreement here with this Karen was, but it sounds like they had a pretty good thing going for them, and they were willing to throw it all away because they can't accept other people who are different than them. Even if at their very core they don't believe in any of that stuff. Like who cares? Just treat them like any other average Joe. Parents force me to go trick or treating with my entitled younger brother. Before this post will begin I have some good news. I'm getting a therapist soon and will hopefully be moving out of this environment. I've sat down and chatted more about this with my friends, and they wish me the best of luck. I recently had a wonderful day. My work just threw a pizza party earlier today, and I got to take one home. The pizza was good, and I bought donuts to share from a local shopping center. Even though the workday did speed up around 12 o'clock, I managed to keep calm and patient. Today was almost perfect, and I wanted to go trick-or-treating, as it was the night of Halloween. After me and my family ate some pasta that I made, I got myself ready. I wore a witch costume and had a black cape. It was a very comfortable outfit, even though the cape did warm my body almost to a point where I nearly ripped it off. My brother told me he'd be ready and I waited outside. It was quite warm and there were mosquitoes buzzing around. It took him a grand total of 40 minutes to get ready. During that time, I did ask him if he was okay, to which he replied yes. I then found out he was stalling for time and making me wait just to annoy me. I told him we needed to leave and my parents sided with him. I spoke even more firmly and told him we needed to leave right now or else all the houses in the neighborhood would be out of suites. After this, I told him I'm leaving right now and to come with me because I wouldn't put up with the stalling and other annoying antics any further. Besides, it was hot and I was getting eaten alive by bugs. Finally, he came out and I calmed myself as I just wanted to enjoy a peaceful night with my brother. I didn't want to do this alone. We were a step off the driveway when he began to wrestle the bag I was holding out of my hand. I asked him why he wanted it and he just ignored me continuing to wrestle it out of my hand. I just walked away after that not wanting to deal with this during Halloween and I was tired. As I walked away I heard my parents screaming at me. I went to a few of the houses which thankfully still had some chocolates left 
and was heading up another part of the street when my dad called me. He yelled at me to come back, and I did. I didn't want to hear more yelling, and just ignoring it would invite more drama. As it turns out, my brother told him that he left his phone in the bag. I looked inside the bag and noticed it wasn't there. I then saw him holding onto it and sticking the finger up at me. I was livid. He lied to my parents again, and I was yelled at for no reason. They yelled at me and forced me outside with him, telling us to have fun, even though I knew it would only end badly. My mother had instructed me to keep him safe and to look after him. It was fine for the first part, until it started to get darker. I told him we should head home, yet he ignored me. Unfortunately, in my area, nighttime is the best time for the idiotic teenagers to come out. I was once sent to the hospital due to their actions. I felt unsafe and feared for my little brother's safety too. It was getting even darker now and all the houses had run out of sweets. I told him we needed to head home, but he still continued to ignore me and ran off into the darkness. I found him soon again and he yelled at me for caring about him and wanting to keep him safe from all the idiots present during the night. I tried explaining that I was only looking out for him and following our mother's orders to keep him safe and that he should prioritize his own safety than run after sweets late at night, but that didn't help either. He started with his aggravated, you wanna go? in an attempt to scare me. I couldn't hold it in anymore and told him we needed to go home right now. As it was getting too late and too dark to be outside anymore, he said, fine, sarcastically, and berated me for acting like a dominant person and treating him like a slave, along with the usual uses of the words abuse, slave, and harassment. I kept as calm as I possibly could, holding back tears. All I wanted to do was enjoy a night out with my brother, and it turned into something I wanted to avoid. He then ran from me in the direction of our house, yelling obscenities and grabbing the attention of cars passing by. I was afraid of him running off into the darkness in hopes of finding more sweets again, so I chased after him. That didn't help, as I had a few cars beeping at me with their drivers, screaming at me to stop chasing that kid. I was even called a predator from one of them, which disgusted me. I came to a halfway point soon, and my brother had disappeared. I called out for him, and he came out from behind the sandstone structure and attempted to push me onto the road. I pushed him back in self-defense and watched him run away again. I arrived home, and as soon as I stepped through the door, I was yelled at. Apparently, I'd chased my brother home and threatened to kill him and hit him physically with a bag of chocolates. I tried to explain what happened, but I was cut off, even though I kept trying to speak up. I was even yelled at for crying again. This was the worst Halloween I've ever had, and if I ever do it again, I want to do it with someone who actually treats me like a normal human instead of a mental punching bag. Personally, I think this is one of those situations where OP grows up to like honestly cut those parents off or hardly ever talk to them or see them. And if those parents ever wonder, oh, why doesn't OP ever want to come see us? It's because you never heard them out. You never believed them. Who has time for somebody that doesn't care what they have to say? Mom is keeping my gifts for herself. I was on a FaceTime call with my mom when her friend walked in. Her friend came on and told me she bought one of those my first year keepsake picture frames to keep up with my four month old's growth. Her friend started to explain what it was, then my mom cut her off and said, oh well I'll just keep it for me. Well her friend said, yeah I guess you could keep it, fill it up every month and once it's complete give it to your daughter. My mom didn't acknowledge it and changed the topic. My only question is, whose child is this? Who should be the one collecting the keepsakes and the photos and who should own the photo album? Maybe the one who legitimately produced the kid themselves? I know that's a weird way to put it, but I'm not wrong, right? And our final story of the day is Entitled Parent doesn't understand why I'm upset with her over her son not getting off the bus at my house. So, to add some backstory to this, originally my second cousin who's in middle school was supposed to ride the bus to my house, get off and stay with me and my mom for the weekend while his parents went up to the mountains. Now, his grandparents live on the same road as his house, important in a minute, and typically they take all of the kids in over the weekend. Well, typically they also go to their lake house, and for whatever reason, my second cousin didn't want to go. Well, it turns out that they were not going this weekend, which resolved the conflict of interest he had, which meant that he got off at his usual stop, in which no one told us this. 
So of course, being the responsible adult here, I tried calling my aunt and uncle and his parents. No one answered, which meant I had no idea where he was, in which I hopped into my car to drive over to my aunt and uncle's place and his house to see if he was there. Well, about halfway there, his mother calls me back. So I pull over and ask her if her son had gotten off at his normal stop. She told me he did. He's staying with his grandparents instead, which gave me a huge wave of relief. I told her to please tell me next time, as I didn't know where he was, and I was concerned that something had gone wrong. Well, she took serious offense to this, given I should have known the plans had changed, as she put it, along with not getting into a panic. He's 11 now, he can be on his own now. I can't even with them sometimes. They are wholly irresponsible with their kids, and I probably will not be willing to help them out again for a bit. I'm fine with plans being changed. Yet, for the love of God, tell people that they've changed. You want to lose favor with your own family? This is how you lose favor with your own family. This is like rule number one in how to be a decent person. If you make plans with somebody and something changes, which is going to cause those plans to no longer be possible, you tell them when you can. They knew ahead of time and they just went radio silent and expected OP to just know somehow. Sorry that OP's telepathy wasn't working very well that day. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.